My name is Dr. Frank Lawless, and I'm here with my actor patient, Andrew, and we're going to demonstrate the protocols for using the BOD, this uh, little device that uh, I invented with my son and uh, has been shown to be very effective in terms of uh, brain plasticity, which is basically the uh, way of changing our brain pattern to more productive uh, patterns. So let's let's start. First of all, let me explain that um, when I when I represent the bod to a patient, I usually use what I call the radio metaphor. Basically, this is the metaphor that uh, that I explain that when we uh, want to listen to a particular brand of music or a talk show or something like that, we normally turn to the frequency that the broadcast is being made. In this situation, we don't know the frequency. So that is the whole uh, need to find the frequency that our emotions rely on. So without getting too complicated, let me also explain that the uh, way that this uh, device works is uh, by creating a imagery of the trauma or uh, the craving or what kind of situation that we're dealing with and discovering the frequency that affects the imagery. So the imagery is basically the medium by which we find that frequency. Hopefully that's simple enough. So let me kind of demonstrate this uh, with Andrew. So Andrew, um, as you know, mm -hmm. we're going to work with the mod and I'd like for you to put on the earphones. Okay. And while he's doing that, let me explain that the better quality of earphones that you have, usually the better uh, result that you have. Now these are pretty cheap earphones uh, and in the uh, usual package that you would get for your bod, you might have those ear plugs. And uh, I don't particularly like those, but a lot of people do. So consequently, it's just a personal preference. But uh, in this case, Andrew is using the earphones that I brought, um, and we're going to be um, working uh, by him finding the frequency that affects the imagery that I propose. Now, in my situation, I usually find a lot of skepticism with regard to the patients, so I usually want to build up their confidence. So I have a confidence builder that I typically use. So uh, let me just uh, begin by uh, using the uh, confidence builder uh, that, that typically helps a patient understand and uh, have some guidance in terms of how he finds his own personal frequency. So uh, let's start off and um, what I'm going to ask Andrew to do is uh, use these bottom bo uh, knobs here to control the frequency. One is uh, one knob is for one ear and the other knob is for the other ear. So consequently you have two knobs, right? So um, I'm turning this on mm -hmm. and um, Andrew, I want you to find a, freq a uh, volume that is loud, but not too loud. Okay. The reason why I give that uh, instruction is because I want the sound to get the brain's attention. So uh, I don't. It won't hurt the ears. We know that it's safe in that regard. But we also want to make the uh, brain alert uh, as to the and sensitive to the specific frequency, frequency that he will find. Okay. All right. All right. Now I'm turning this off and we'll go to the next step. Again, this is a confidence builder. So I usually start with a happiness 
frequency. So I want you to find a imagery. Mm -hmm. It can be a, a, a memory or it can be actually a fantasy uh, that will make you feel happy when you think about it. Now, I don't want it to be uh, hilarious mm -hmm. because that creates a signaling effect. What I want you to do, maybe on a scale from one to 10, 10 being the most happy that you could be, and one would be sadness. I want you to find some imagery that will make you feel about a seven. A seven. Okay, um, I can think of some imagery. Would you like me to? Yeah, okay. sure. I can think about a, a family beach trip. That'd probably be a good seven. Okay, a family beach trip. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I want you to turn this upper right knob. Okay. This upper upper right knob, uh, and slowly turn it to see if as you remember or as you think about this uh, this trip that your happiness emotion will gain more than a seven. Okay. Does that make sense? That does. Okay. So go ahead. Oh wow. Okay. So, do you feel more happy? Yeah, it feels more like an eight, maybe even a nine. Okay, good. Well, let's go more one, one step further, and I want you to use the left knob and see if you can even make it more. Okay, All right? wow. All right, so go for it. Wow, that's, that's close to a 10. Well, that is uh, kind of the first step. And I want you to kind of uh, remember the numbers mm -hmm. that you selected because okay. this would actually be very beneficial just to make you happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're depressed, if you're sad, if you're discouraged, uh, all you would have to do is to turn these knobs to these frequencies and your brain will become happier. That Excellent. That sounds great. So, do you, do you kind of understand what we're looking for here? That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So, let's, let's start on what I might be calling a trauma event. Uh, this is typically things like PTSD. It's also uh, like uh, actually early memories where maybe a parent or a family member abused you in the, in the past. Uh, sometimes, uh, especially uh, for women, there is a PTSD effect with regard to being raped or other kinds of trauma. There's a lot of different kinds of trauma. So uh, the, this is what the bot is noted best for in terms of eradicating the emotional aspects of that trauma. So typically speaking, uh, if you if you go into a uh, training program, uh, there are some basic uh, steps. Now, uh, later in in a few minutes, we'll go through these steps in a little bit more depth. But for right now, what you do is you find the frequency for the trauma, and the emotional aspect of, of the trauma, and then you find a. Uh, disruptor frequency that basically disrupts that particular brain pattern. And then uh, you uh, basically have found uh, a way of, of keeping or maintaining some level of relaxation and peace as you can then uh, process that uh, past history or that imagery uh, more effectively. So with that in mind, I, I want to uh, say that this disruptor uh, protocol is also very effective for such things as motion sickness and in that regard you would uh, basically find the frequency for the motion sickness and then find a disruptor uh, frequency for that. 
uh, uh, there's actually some really good data showing that you can also disrupt voices for people who have psychosis. Uh, you can eliminate those. On the other side, there's also a disruptor for what I call the obsessions, uh, like craving, uh, craving sweets, uh, craving drugs, uh, and uh, aspects of being obsessed uh, with certain thoughts and frequencies like OCD. So those are various uh, approaches that would come under the same category uh, for using this particular protocol. So, uh, Andrew, we're gonna go through now, mm -hmm. and I'm turning all these to zero. I'm leaving the uh, volumes as they were. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that uh, we had talked earlier about the kind of trauma mm -hmm. that you um, have experienced. So, uh, why don't uh, you share with us what that trauma was? Okay, I can think of a particularly difficult time. Um, I was really little, maybe four years old, and um, had just a really bad incident with my father. Okay, so let's use a scale. Okay. On a scale from one to 10, mm -hmm. 10 being uh, this trauma interferes with every moment of your life. You have uh, nightmares, you have uh, 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 terrors, uh, you have flashbacks, mm -hmm. that would be a 10. Uh, one would be actually no effect whatsoever. Okay. So on a one to 10 scale, uh, how much does it interfere with your life? I'd say that I catch myself a lot of times going back to that situation, so it'd probably be high, like an eight. Like an eight? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go through the similar kind of approach here and that is that I like for you to think of that imagery mm -hmm. um, and um, that, that you read it in eight and I want you to turn this upper right knob okay which is the pitch knob and find that frequency that makes it worse mm. uh, is that okay with you that's okay 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 it, it won't be long okay we just need to find the frequency Okay? okay, so I'm going to turn it on, and what you uh, need to do is use this upper knob and find that frequency that uh, the trauma is communicating through. Okay. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. You okay? Yeah, all right. Okay. Now, uh, let me digress for a second here. This is also very good for pain, very effective for uh, finding the frequency for pain, but that's not what we're doing here. We're, we're dealing with another kind of trauma. Uh, so now I want you to turn this upper left knob. Now, what this will do is separate the, the uh, sound from your right ear to your left ear and actually create a third frequency. Hmm. So um, I want you to turn this knob until you find that frequency that disrupts that emotion. Okay. All right. It's better. About on that scale from one to 10 that we just mentioned, mm -hmm. what is it now? Wow, I'd say it went down to more like a five. About a five? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to, let's, let's do a little bit more searching here mm -hmm. and see if we can um, maybe use some of your volume knobs at the same time and see uh, if you can make it even lower okay now one way that you I would like for you to think about is I like for you to relax okay and breathe at the same time okay okay so let's let's see how that works so adjust the volume a little bit and then we're gonna use the disruptor now mm -hmm.
That's much better. So, what is it now? I brought it down to a two. A two, mm -hmm. okay. So, let's just kind of uh, relax for a moment mm -hmm. and uh, listen to this. Okay. And I'd like for you to continue to use your breath and relax and see how far we can even go even further. Okay. Just by using our, our relaxation skills, all right? Mm -hmm. So, here we go. You don't have to turn this. Just, oh, okay. Just, just leave that. Just breathe. I was even more peaceful. Okay. So we're kind of getting into uh, where we can actually kind of live with that imagery mm -hmm. and stay relaxed. Yeah. So, okay. That sounds great. Okay. Now, I want to go just one step further. Okay. Because I, I'm very happy with this result, and mm -hmm. I hope Me you too. are too. Mm -hmm. um, I want you just to use the disruptor knob here. And remember what we said about being happy? Mm -hmm. I want you to see if you can find a place that you can be happy. Mm. Now, what I'm doing here is kind of fascinating because I'm leaving this pitch frequency, which was the uh, frequency for the trauma, and I'm asking it actually the brain to convert this pattern to not uh, to be not only relaxing but to switch it to a positive uh, emotion. They don't have to like the trauma. I don't want to put that idea together, but it's a way of changing the brain pattern so that it's that it's reset in a, in a different way. So uh, let's let's try this mm -hmm. uh, where you turn this knob and see if you can find a frequency that not only makes you relax, but makes you uh, happier. Okay, excellent. Uh, Very happy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's test this a little bit. Okay. Uh, I want you to think about this trauma that you had with your family, mm -hmm. and tell me uh, kind of how you feel about that. Yeah. It doesn't feel like I'm as stuck back there anymore. Oh, okay. Kind of feel separate from it, and yeah. Huh. Uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, right? but it. Kind of, does it feel like you're uh, creating this distance where you can be more objective and make, uh, can, you know, where you can leave it if you need to? Yes, I think that's very accurate. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, that is basically the protocol that I use for the trauma. Uh, and again, this is the most widely used uh, work with this particular device. However, there are other approaches that I'd like to also mention. These are a lot simpler, and I'm going to ask Andrew to switch his, his uh, process here a little bit and, uh, and just do a demonstration of certain ways that you can uh, begin to use the BOD uh, in other ways, uh, in other approaches to uh, problems. Uh, for example, uh, <clears throat> we mentioned in the very beginning where he found a happy uh, uh, feeling, emotion. Uh, for people who are suffering with depression, that will, this will also work. Uh, especially if they're having a particularly depressive event that they're struggling with, such as grief, and uh, other aspects of uh, disappointment uh, and fear. Uh, so consequently, uh, what I would ask him to do would be to find a happy setting that uh, could counteract that so that 
what I would then do is say, okay, after he finds this happy setting, then I would say, okay, I want you to think back when you were depressed and try to see if you can um, stay depressed while you're listening to that. Hmm. Okay? Okay. So uh, why don't we just try this for a minute? Okay. So we're going to be using the frequency knob? Yeah. Okay. And my goal here is to recall the kind of depressed state that I yeah. was in, but try to get happy. Yeah. Okay. While, while he's doing this, I might mention that there's several people in my clinic that just start laughing out loud. And, um, and because the brain gets a shift in accordance to their particular source of depression. And that kind of dissolves that. Now, it may not dissolve that over a long period of time, but basically they have a tool then to get out of being stuck. So does that, does that seem to have the same uh, feeling for you? That's definitely a happy setting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. So uh, again, we have some previous um, experience by, uh, by building up the confidence so that he can then do other kinds of exploration and find new frequencies. I'd also like to mention that uh, this is very useful for addictions. Um, and let me just kind of describe that uh, since you're not, uh, don't have that problem, uh, might not be able to get into it as much. Right. But basically what I find with people who have addiction issues with regard to especially uh, things like cocaine, uh, marijuana, uh, alcohol, uh, and so forth is that um, I use that experience uh, in a different way. Uh, for example, uh, let's say that uh, my patient had uh, an alcohol problem. I would ask him, what kind of reaction does he want to get by drinking alcohol or cocaine or etc.? And so basically he will give me probably a reason why he uses these drugs in order to numb himself or to escape his uh, frustration or anxieties or to become more social and so forth. So what I would instruct him to do uh, is actually find that feeling that he wants by using this, this, uh, these drugs and so forth and replicate that feeling by using the bod. Uh, and I find that uh, people with addiction issues do uh, are able to find that frequency very easily because their brain already knows it. What I'm doing is giving them another way, another way, uh, an alternative way of finding the same thing that they really want to experience. So uh, it's not unusual for, for example, a person with a cocaine addiction to be very happy because, let's face it, um, there's a reason for addiction and one of the reasons has to do with the pleasure principle that, the, uh, that uh, uh, is stimulated in the brain. So if we can find that same experience, a healthy way of finding that experience, then uh, there won't be that aftermath and there won't be the destruction that happens uh, with uh, addiction uh, processes. So that is one uh, specific issue that uh, I think that has been very useful for me in working in this field. Another issue that has to do with uh, uh, addiction, and we've already covered this in terms of uh, dealing with the cravings. People crave uh, their uh, substance a great deal, as well as sugar and other foods that also have uh, negative effects. Uh, you would use uh, either this approach where they get the satisfaction, uh, the emotional satisfaction by using the frequency uh, that they would gain from these uh, drugs or food, etc. Uh, also, cigarette smoking is part of this. Or, 
you can go back to the uh, protocol that we just talked about in terms of, of uh, uh, dealing with the um, same thing as trauma. Uh, you basically just disrupt the feelings or the thoughts, uh, the emotions uh, of using uh, drugs or food, etc. Uh, in this uh, previous uh, uh, set of protocol. Also, I want to mention that actually the original use for the a uh, for the uh, bond was to take care of ADHD. Now, as we hopefully know, that ADHD is basically a brain disorder uh, that is related to late development of the frontal lobes. In other words, the way you typically can diagnose ADHD or ADD uh, through the uh, EEG uh, findings of the brain maps is by finding the low voltage in that frontal area, which uh, in turn uh, can be explained that the person with ADD or ADHD tends to try to, to stimulate that frontal lobe with novel experiences or taking risk or uh, being uh, divert attention from what he needs to be doing. So uh, again, what we find with the BOD that's very useful is to uh, you find uh, have the person find setting. Well, let me just use uh, Andrew as an example here. Mm -hmm. uh, now you're an ADHD okay. patient, all right? So, uh, as we know, ADHD um, and ADD has to do with uh, uh, slow uh, ability or low ability to deal with uh, a concentration. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, attention deficit uh, is low concentration. So, what I would instruct you to do is find the frequency that helps you maintain concentration. Hmm. Now, how do you do that? Well, uh, the way I typically help a person find that frequency is say, uh, I might find a, a picture on the wall. Okay. Or I might put a, uh, um, a book in front of them mm -hmm. and say, okay, I want you to find that frequency that helps you concentrate the longest. Uh, if they're looking at the picture on the wall, I might have you say, okay, how long can you concentrate by just looking at that picture, examining it, and so forth? And you can time yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I often can time yourself, but it's really pretty easy for a person that has attention deficit disorder to say, okay, I, I can't last more than 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we, we find that uh, frequency that they can look at the picture or, or read the book and say, okay, I can concentrate longer and longer. So if you can find a, uh, that setting, uh, you, you, there is really, I call it an amazing difference in terms of uh, being able to study, mm -hmm. being able to write and maintain your thoughts. That's it's also great. very helpful for mathematics. Hmm. So ADD, ADHD is basically, um, uh, the protocol is, is pretty one step. Wow. It's one step oriented. Um, and also, uh, I have mentioned earlier about motion sickness, uh, the, the bond is also used in space travel right. in terms of helping people not get motion sickness or air sickness or whatever you want to call it in, in space, um, especially without gravity. Um, and what they do is they, uh, they basically as they're floating around, they find that frequency that settles, settles the brain down. It's kind of a relaxation kind of thing. So that I think gives a pretty good perspective in terms of how do you use the bod uh, in various aspects. Um, this training session that we've just gone through will help you uh, ground these uh, procedures in, ter in terms of step one, step two, step three, 
And as you become more comfortable and be able to find the clinical skills uh, that pertain to each individual, uh, you'll begin to find confidence in yourself as a, as a therapist and a coach uh, to help the person find those frequencies and then have a, a new way of viewing the world and managing their anxieties and depression and other aspects as, as we've already discussed. Thank you for your attention and uh, good luck.